Last year, the headline features on the iPhone 14 and the Huawei Mate 50 series of smartphones was that they can connect directly to a satellite in space and help you send an emergency message via satellite. No need for any additional hardware. If you find yourself stranded somewhere where there is no cell coverage, then you have a lifeline that is satellite. That is how powerful smartphones are right now, but this is just the start. Qualcomm recently announced that their Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 flagship chipsets will support satellite communication, bringing the feature to 2023 flagship smartphones. And not only that, the satellite service is not just restricted to emergency services, as is the case with Apple and Huawei. It will also support recreational communication to allow you to communicate with your peers in areas where there is no cell coverage, like when you're hiking in the wilderness. The next evolution of this is being worked on now and it's called 5G Non-Terrestrial Networks or 5G NTN. Okay, I'm moving a little bit too fast so let's slow it down a bit to make this all make sense. Let's look at how our smartphones work. The mobile network has cell towers or base stations to which our phones connect to. And when our phones are connected to these cell towers, they can make calls, send or receive texts and access the internet. You just have to have credit to enjoy these services. These base stations are physical and mounted on top of towers right here on the ground. So if your phone has a network signal, it's most likely a few kilometers away from one of these towers, roughly eight kilometers or less, depending on if you're connected to 2G, 3G, 4G, or 5G. These cell towers that our phones connect to are called BTS, not the Korean musicians. It's an acronym for Base Transceiver Station. Several of these BTSs are connected to a BSC or base station controller via microwave radio links or optic fiber links. And it basically monitors and controls the BTSs that our phones connect to. The BTS is the slave and the BSC is the master. Then a number of these BSCs are connected to an MSC or mobile switching center. Think of an MSC as the border post where traffic leaves one network going into another or enters the network from another network. All these network elements are right here on the ground and because of this, they are termed terrestrial networks. And this is the setup for most mobile networks today. Most of the network is planted on solid ground. Inasmuch as 5G was marketed for its speed, bandwidth, and latency qualities, what is far more interesting about it, which is not being talked about a lot, is how it's setting up the platform for a hybrid mobile network that uses a combination of terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks for mobile coverage. So on top of the ground-based network elements that include the BTSs, the BSCs, and the MSCs that we talked about earlier, networks will also have elements that are not ground-based, like drones, high-altitude balloons, planes, and low-Earth orbiting satellites. So, Apple and Huawei managed to include specific hardware in their latest flagship smartphones to allow them to have direct communication with satellites in space. But this technology will soon be available to any smartphone through 5G. Snapdragon claimed that their latest 8 Gen 2 chipset already supports this service and MediaTek also announced that their future chipsets will support the tech. They even made a demo of it at the Mobile World Congress 2023. Every smartphone at the moment already can communicate directly with a satellite but only for purposes of navigation. 5G NTN will look at bringing voice and data services directly from the satellite to your smartphone. It's also going to play a crucial role in IoT, especially in the realm of self-driving vehicles where excellent network coverage and low latency are crucial demands. 5G NTN will also play a big role in providing a high capacity backbone for internet access providers. At the moment, fiber is the most preferred technology for backhaul links by internet access providers followed by radio access networks. 5G NTN is coming in as a viable alternative to these backhaul options and with the promise that it will, for the greater part, not be affected by some of the issues associated with terrestrial networks such as power outages or natural disasters. The biggest and brightest future of 5G is going to be an accelerated improvement in global mobile network coverage. 
Instead of huge capital expenditures by MNOs constructing and maintaining a base station to service 10 subscribers, they would rather lease a satellite servicing the whole area. This means better mobile coverage and convenience for you and me in the most remote parts of the world, and also a faster rate of network expansion for the mobile network operators. Furthermore, instead of running point-to-point -point terrestrial radio access networks, MNOs will in the future only install the base station at a population cluster with the base station using satellite to connect to the rest of the MNOs network. 5G is still quite young and still has up until 2030 to mature before the introduction of 6G. So it essentially is setting up a foundation for the next evolution in mobile connectivity. It is being set up to accommodate the billions of IoT devices that are currently in use now and the ones that will power the smart cities of the future. And it also has the potential to significantly change the way MNOs and ISPs design and manage their networks, possibly reducing the need for a lot of hardware that they currently use.